okay now let's discuss about uh, the actual protein trafficking system from cytosol inside the nucleus and from nucleus outside the uh, nucleus uh, which is cytosol so in this first picture we are talking about the nuclear transport of a particular protein in this picture this is our target protein and uh, for uh, going through this procedure i must tell you something in this whole procedure we have to have particular types of proteins which is actually facilitating this process one of this protein is the nuclear import receptor this nuclear import receptor is attached with the cyto uh, cytosolic fibrils remember uh, when you talk about the structure of nuclear pore we have talked about the cytosolic uh, those fibrils in the cytosolic fibrils we have proteins like nuclear import receptor this nuclear import receptor is a kind of protein which will recognize the signal sequence uh, for a protein which have to enter into inside the nucleus as we have talked about before that nuclear signal sequence are having uh, this the, the particular lysine residues repeating over and over again so if it have if it recognize a particular signals like that then the protein can only bind with this nuclear import receptor and the protein can be transported inside the cell so this is the work of nuclear import receptor and we have another protein uh, we have talked before is the ran protein which is a gtps we have a ran gdp and we also uh, binds it and we have also uh, the ran gtp and this procedure we also have proteins which is actually helping to shuffle this ran proteins which are called the gap which is the uh, guanosine exchange factor and also the gap which is present in the cytosol which is called uh, the G the gtps activating protein so in this picture what we can look yeah, we the a protein comes in uh, in the cytosol a protein comes in and nuclear import signal uh, receptor is bind with that protein it recognizes the signal uh, and it find that the signal is correct and the signal is uh, to enter this protein inside the nucleus and then the protein is tightly bound with this uh, uh, nuclear import receptor and it will be transported from the outer space to the inner space via the nuclear pore in this picture what we have we have the column subunit we have the we have the annular subunit and uh, we also have the ring subunits and these are the fibrils and finally the protein is entering inside the nucleus with the help of this nuclear import receptor protein and when it enters inside the nucleus uh, then the ran protein which is a uh, which is uh, the key player of a uh, transporting this protein which is the vehicle for that attaches with this with this receptor or the nuclear import receptor so nuclear import receptor have a two binding side one binding side is for attaching the target protein and second binding side is to attach with the ran protein or ran gtp bound state of protein okay so when the ran is a gtp bound state when it attaches with this receptor import uh, nuclear import receptor it will go through a conformational shift and this conformational shift helps to remove our target protein into the nucleus and uh, then uh, the receptor molecule uh, put into uh, the inactive state or uh, it cannot bind any protein in that situation because it is bound with ran gtp then this protein is free this protein is going from the nucleus inside uh, in from from the nucleus in, into the cytosolic environment via the nuclear pore complex again and it is traveling and it is go inside outside the nucleus in the cytosolic environment uh, this ran gtp is hydrolyzed by the presence of guanos uh, gtps activating protein or gap so we have ran gap there gap is hydrolyzing the gtp bound with the ran and uh, it is converted into ran gdp and ran gdp remove uh, is removed from this uh, receptor protein and the receptor protein is free to bind with another target protein molecule so this is the overall cycle so again i am repeating it one target molecule is there uh, the nuclear import receptor having two side one is to bind with the target protein another side is to bind with the ran protein or protein with ran gtp okay so finally in the uh, extracellular space uh, extra nuclear space or in the cytosol there are no ran gtp proteins bound to this nuclear import receptor so it is free to bind with this target protein target protein binds with it and after binding uh, with this uh, receptor protein it recognizes its signal sequence when it recognizes its signal sequence this protein is transferred from the nucleus uh, from from the cytosol inside the nucleus and when it come inside the nucleus then uh, a protein which is called the uh, guanosine exchange factor 
uh, is activated and uh, ran gtp is made and the ran gtp is made ran gtp is attached with uh, the other part of this receptor molecule and when as soon as the ran gtp bind with uh, this uh, receptor molecule receptor goes through a conformational shift that helps to remove this protein molecule into this nucleus and then this protein molecule bind with ran gtp is translocated from the nucleus outside the nucleus into the cytosol and when it go in, in into the cytosol then the gtp or ran gtp is hydrolyzed into ran gdp and inorganic phosphate and ran gtp is released and the protein which is a nuclear import receptor is released free and this receptor is ready to or uh, prepared to go through another cycle so this is how the cycle is going on and on and on okay the same type of thing can also happen in this case we can see here in in this uh, protein to deliver uh, the protein inside uh, into the cytosol from a nucleus so now we are talking about a nuclear export signal so in this nuclear export region what we have we have ran gtp in in uh, in the nucleus because we have talked about before that uh, the in nucleus we have ran gtp in cytosol we have ran gtp in this ran gtp state in this kind of protein this kind of receptor which is called the nuclear export receptor not the nuclear import receptor remember in case of nuclear import receptor they have two binding site but they can only bind with one at a time so whether it is bound with the protein subunit uh, or the target protein or it can bind with the other ran gtp so it cannot bind with two at a particular time because whenever it bound with ran gtp it goes or shifts uh, through a conformational shift okay that's why it cannot bind with uh, the both of the proteins at the same both of the things at the same time but in nuclear export receptor it can bind with two Uh, proteins at a particular time it also have uh, the same kind of structure it have the same types of uh, sites to bind with proteins one side to bind with the ran gtp and another side is to bind with uh, <coughs> the cargo protein or the protein which has to be delivered outside the uh, nucleus okay so the protein which is having the nuclear export signal bind with this protein along with ran gtp because ran gtp is needed for traveling from nucleus to out outside the nucleus because this is the vehicle for uh, for doing this purpose so now this protein is transferring from the nu nucleus to the cytosol throughout the nuclear pore after uh, traveling uh, after coming to the cytosolic environment the ran gtp is hydrolyzed into ran gdp and as soon as it is hydrolyzed and gdp is released remember this hydrolyzing process is mediated via the presence of ran gap or called the guano uh, the uh, called the gtp is activating protein and the ran gdp is released after the ran gdp releasing uh, and also uh, the target protein is released into the cytosol and the protein and the nuclear export receptor is free again to carry out another procedure another round of this whole signaling system that's how uh, the nuclear import and export is done so in this import and ex export the protein structure is almost similar but the difference is in case of nuclear import we have the nuclear import receptor and the export we have nuclear export receptor and this ex nuclear export receptor it can bind with both proteins at the same time but in nuclear import receptor cannot bind with both protein and that is helping them to carry out their procedure in their own manner